All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Big report yesterday coming from our friend over at The Athletic, Brody Miller, who dropped it uh, yesterday afternoon. If you have not uh, read it, get over to The Athletic. Uh, titled LSU running back John Emery to miss opening two games to suspension. In that same report, it was um, also talked about Radarius Jones, um, the uh, defensive back who looks like he is going to miss uh, the regular season as well. Uh, dealing with some academic issues. Let's go down to Brody Miller here, uh, who has been covering LSU football uh, for the past couple of years, does a great job over at The Athletic. Get the subscription. Uh, make sure and do that here for football season and follow our guy on Twitter at Brody A. Miller. Uh, Brody, good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you, Jordan? Doing okay. Um, obviously, everybody reacting to your report yesterday that came out Sunday. Um, let, let's just start with the Emory news. Um, John Emory missing... These two games. This goes back to to what he was dealing with last year, correct? Correct. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I listened to you before. I think there's also an element of confusion on on my end as well about just kind of how it got to this point. But the way it was explained to me was, you know, it's not like you're suspended literally for a season. You're sus you're suspended for a semester, a fall semester. And it sounds like there are, you know, certain. Then at the end of that semester, you have to have certain, you know, checks crossed and all that. And certain you know things figured out and i will not pretend i know all the details of what but i from what i understand there were still some things that left them wanting to add another game or two now as you've been talking about and as anyone else you will tell you you know in the past 10 months nine months they've been thrilled with with john emmer you know his grades have been good under brian kelly i believe you were saying earlier he was one of the swat team leaders he's one of the guys they've been able to lean on i mean People at LSU like are constantly reminding me just he is in good standing with us. This is not like an issue with the LSU staff because he, they he's blown them away lately. But it is something where it is kind of carried over from last year, all old stuff. And but they still have a week or two to try to get this down, and they are using that as kind of a mitigating situation. That, you know, hey, look how good he's doing now, all that. But yeah, so it it is kind of a confusing situation. That you know, there still could be more after missing an entire season, but uh, I think more will come out soon. Uh, if I recall, in going back and doing some some just kind of reading back on this, you sat down with Don Jackson, who was Emory's lawyer and still is, who represented him during this process. Um, by no means am I making any excuses for Emory, but this was a this was a situation that was very much outline that, that we see from, from college student athletes. Can, can you go back to the beginning of this and just kind of how it started? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty wild one because for starters, obviously you have to preface with John Emery put himself in the situation to some extent. There were some mistakes he made. He fell behind in some things early in his academic career, but then it got, you know, during 2020 is when a lot of, you know, the issues really kind of came to the surface. And a lot was going on for him at the time. And that was a large part of Don Jackson and every family's case for appeal was the extreme hardship he was going through. His stepfather, Webster Garrison, was basically hospitalized and in a coma due, due to COVID for several months. That carried into last season. And honestly, he was still hospitalized again a few weeks ago. I mean, that's something that's still kind of going on with him for two years now, the health issues his stepfather's having. His grandmother died. Uh, Emory himself had COVID twice. And that was a large part of their case. And there are other things that I can't quite mention, but they had a lot of, you know, just due to his academic history, specifics with Emory, that they really, Jackson Camp would explain, this should be a slam dunk case. And Don Jackson's the guy who basically gets, he, Christian Fulton case was, uh, he got taken away. He, he's a kind of a guy that gets a lot of these things handled. And privately, he was like, this should be a slam dunk case. And a lot of stuff that, is still hard to kind of understand, kind of got blocked, whether it be from the LSU end, from the NCAA end, and a lot of things that seemed clear didn't go through. But, you know, they did. They, they, they tried to do everything they could that summer. He took the maximum amount of classes and did well that summer. But apparently there's a limit on how many classes you could take in a summer. Oh. So he was still three credits shy. Uh, there, there's a rumor of the wrong class. I can't confirm that part, but... Yeah, so the whole thing was just a mess, and they felt like it was obvious that they would have gotten that appeal would have been successful, and it was not. So yeah, it's been just a, a wild case. Uh, do you know the status of that appeal right now, and when they anticipate to hear any word back on what will this season look like? 
Yeah, I, I've gathered probably in the next few days or week is kind of the sense I've gotten of when they'll probably know more. Um, I, I won't pretend to know the actual status in terms of how they feel about it. I think LSU, as you know, is kind of preparing for him not to be there, while the Emory camp is certainly optimistic and hopeful that they can make something happen here, just describing his case. But yeah, I, I won't speculate too much on kind of where it's at. So how do you read into the first three weeks of camp and how they've divvied up the reps and what it means for the running back position with just the status that they're in right now? Yeah, I think it's notable that, you know, Noah Kane has been taking a lot of the first team reps and, you know, Buzz has been, the Frank Wilson's been really happy with him. Obviously, he's a, an experienced guy playing power five football. And, you know, I think, I, I think there's a case for he's experienced and, you know, you can kind of trust him going into a big setting like this. I mean, Goodwin had plenty of experience last year, but, you know, say hypothetically, it would make a lot of sense to, to trust him. But, yeah, as you said, John Emery, whenever it comes to kind of scrimmage things, Emery's always available, but he kind of goes maybe third or fourth for this reason. They've known for weeks this was coming that, you know, you had to prepare the other guys and make sure the team was ready to play with those other guys. Kane adds more of that power kind of move the chains back, but Goodwin will see the field a lot as a very explosive guy, a guy who can make big plays and has really conducive to what they do. So I think both those guys will be the main ones. And do not rule out Josh Williams, a guy who's had some really good moments through spring and fall camp. The guy, again, reliability sometimes can be a buzzword, especially if, say, it's Jaden Daniels and you have some kind of dynamism going on at quarterback. Maybe that makes sense. So, yeah, I think Kane's clearly the first guy, but I think all three of those guys will play at Florida State a good bit. Uh, Brody, outside of your reporting on, on this case alone, have you gotten a feeling of what the NCAA's presence is going to mean in college sports? I mean, like, is it there a, a, almost a, a section of maybe even at LSU that's like, hey, man, forget the NCAA. Like, do we even have to listen to them on this stuff? What, what, what legs do they really have to stand on after the last three years of what has happened to that organization? Yeah, certainly I won't pretend to know like how else you views them or kind of, you know, this case specifically. But yeah, there's no denying that the the overall authority of the NCAA has been kind of weakened over the last few years, especially with the rise of Super Leagues and NIL and how poorly the NCAA handled that. That it's just been Mark Emmert obviously kind of on his way out. There's just been this slow but steady kind of loss in faith, the little faith that exists in the NCAA. But yeah, there is speculation that maybe the NCAA won't even exist in a few years or definitely not in the uh, form it's in currently. You know, I, I do think there is a lot of that. I won't pretend to know how sure. LSU views it or anything like that. But but yeah, it, it does make these situations tough. That it's kind of like, uh, you can put, you know, a player basically is having a year or two games to spend about the NCAA while, you know, so much other stuff is kind of getting thrown to the wayside. Um, another piece in that story that you broke yesterday was about Radarius Jones, a cornerback who provides depth and played nine games for LSU last season. Uh, in your report, it stated that uh, it looks like he's going to be out the regular season. Uh, what effect does that have on, on, on the football team, and, and what did you learn about his case uh, before that story yesterday? Yeah, I think – I don't think – I'd put it as they've known that one for a while. Yeah. And, you know, so that's one where I, to listeners, I wouldn't let that change your view of how they've talked about the defensive back room for the last few weeks, how they've talked about how much of it's, and I'm not saying I buy this, but how it's almost a strength now at defensive back. That part, you know, that that's with them knowing Ray Dennis Jones has been out. He's a guy who was always kind of all about raw potential. I mean, shoot, everyone he signs, but this coach was just buzzing about his potential. That's still there, by the way. But I don't think he's a guy that was supposed to be, you know, a key player this year or anything like that. I don't think he's quite put it together yet. So losing him certainly stinks when, you know, you, you have the depth issues that have been well documented. You don't know who the, the clear backup outside corner is, things like that. That's concerning, but at the same time, they they were well aware of this, so this isn't news to them. And with this case specifically, not, not a ton, but yes, it is, again, things that pre-existed, I'd say, the Kelly staff overall, things that were just kind of, I mean, he was obviously out for the bowl game, I believe, as well, because of academic issues. And, you know, it's it's a carryover from just kind of how, how bad some of the academic situations were ending the season. I mean, I don't have the number, but I know there were five, six maybe players in that seven in that bowl game that missed because of academics. That's amazing. I mean, because of, of just how hard it is, 
at a school like LSU as a football player to be academically ineligible. Yeah. I mean, Brody, if you and I were walk ones, we would have 2.0s. I couldn't, you know even, I mean? I like, couldn't even do it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, 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 is, it, it is almost fail-proof in a sense when, 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 when you are – and not just at LSU. I mean, pick an SEC school. Yeah. Pick a Big Ten. Pick a Big 12 school. Any school that depends on their football program, it is hard, like really hard, to become academically ineligible as a player on the team. No, it's true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not looking to dunk on a kid, but yeah, it's accurate that, you know, when as much as it is really hard being a student athlete when you have so many obligations, there are so many excessive resources to making sure you are, you know, taken care of academically. Advisors, support, just general, I mean, I don't want to go, like, so yeah. much help is provided to make sure Layers. You, you are... Yes. Protected layers. So, I mean, yes. layers. Yes. layers. This is what Brian Kelly so, left yeah. Notre Dame. Exactly. <laughs> it really is. It, it, there's probably yeah. a piece of it that just the academic standards, it's it's easier to get in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let my five stars yeah. play. Yeah, right. No, it's a really good point. So it is strange. And, you know, so much of last, the last two years probably does factor into that. Just 2020, I think there were a lot of players who kind of everything was virtual. And I think there was a stretch of just kind of like, do I need to go to class a little bit? Than last year, I'm sure. One, I think some blame does fall on the John regime in general for not having some of this stuff handled. But two, I wonder how much when a coach gets fired and there's no clear structure, how much, and I'm speculating, but how much that really just like leads to a, a lack of discipline or feeling like you need to be on top of some, some of these things. Uh, Brian Kelly said in his last media outing on Saturday inside Tiger Stadium that he hopes to have a choice here on quarterback pretty soon uh, because they've got to start game planning. How do you like that competition? What do you expect on a timeline there? Yeah, I think a decision probably will be made this week, and I'm, I'm not sure if that'll be out there, but hopefully one of us gets that out there. Uh, but, yeah, I think the really telling thing from what he said Saturday was him acknowledging that, that hey, there's a good chance both these guys will play this year. Yeah. Sure, some of that is just, you know, politicking and making sure these guys are happy and keeping everyone in the mix. Totally, that's part of it. But it's also, as you and I have talked about extensively, like, that's also a lot of his history playing two quarterbacks. Not necessarily a two quarterback system, but being game to game to some extent, figuring out who the guy is, not being afraid to bench a guy when he's struggling. Because there has been this kind of half baked theory throughout camp that like is without with information and, and isn't that Jaden Daniels might be the opening day starter. A lot of us are leaning toward that right now. They trust him to manage the offense. They trust they love his mobility. I'm not saying I'm reporting that, but it just kind of seems like it's slowly inching that way. But there's also this belief that it's like, hey, it would make a lot of sense if he starts early, he's experienced, yeah. but it's a short leash. And Gary Nussmeyer totally could see the field by SEC play or something. Yeah. So I'm not reporting, but, yeah, I just think uh, I think Daniels has a leg up right now just because, again, the management part of it, I think, to a lot of extent, but it's not over. No, I agree with you. If there was an option on the test to choose that choice, that's the one I would pick. That it would be mm -hmm. Daniels early on, short leash, Nussmeyer. Yeah, it's almost a matter of time before you get to him. Outside of that position, Brody, and I'll get you out of here on this one. I know you got a busy day. Um, what else are you watching right now? At, like, like what's, what's the story outside of the quarterback, Emory, and the stuff that's going on off the field? Where are you looking to next here as they really start to begin preparation for Florida State? You know, I think a lot, to some extent, I think some of the big question marks are slowly starting to feel more comfortable. You know, like, I think corner eye was in panic. But, and by the way, to some extent, it's still against the figure. I think I think I ranked that higher than the O-line now. Uh -huh. concerns. But still, I think the Colby Richardson thing isn't worth yada yada. He does look like a good football player. That does add nice depth there. I'm just intrigued, I think, by, you know, on Thursday, I believe it was Thursday, right, scrimmage. You know, I think you saw the corners get beat a good bit. And, you know, Bernard Converse, they rave about him. He's a guy they trust, so I think you feel good about that. But, you know, I don't. I also don't know if he's going in there to be some game changer. Seven Banks is still kind of slowly progressing, but he's not quite, like, 100%. Like, the games are in two weeks. And, and you know, you saw Seven Banks get beat a time or two. And, again, I'm not judging scrimmage too harshly, but it's, it's not like you have any sure things there. You don't love your depth there. So I think that's still always going to be the top one. But just also – you know, the O-line battle, of course, because I, I am so intrigued by them moving those pieces around. It does make a lot of sense what they're trying right now, it's trying different things of moving Miles Frazier from right guard to left guard and letting uh, sliding Anthony Bradford into the right guard and then giving Cam Wire some reps to right tackle. That makes a lot of sense, but what that also does is 
it gives you a few different templates so that, hey, maybe you do prefer the, the Bradford Frazier right side more and shorts back to left guard, but you have different things you can do because what they're really trying to do is get seven or eight starters there that they can always plug in. But the other man is just, I think you and I are still on it, but I think we talked Thursday morning or Wednesday morning about like being on the Malik Neighbors hype train. Yeah. And, and then I, and I left that scrimmage just like, I'm really on it. You know, I think Malik Neighbors is the guy that Butte is still the number one. But he's going to get all the attention, too. So I think Malik Neighbors really be the guy to put money on to have you know, the breakout years. Uh, great work over the weekend, man. Keep it up. Thanks for the time this morning, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Jordy. Appreciate it, man. Take Jordy care. Miller, there he is from The Athletic. Get your subscription today as football season is here. Make sure you follow our guy on Twitter, at Brody A. Miller, for breaking news like he was putting out uh, over the weekend. Uh, daily. Remember, we are brought to you by our friend over at uh, Edward Jones, Daniel Newman. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com was over in Central yesterday. Central is exploding, man. I mean, there is construction. Oh, that's that's the Noah Tingle effect. Everywhere. <laughs> um, but if you are looking for some help with financial advice, go see Daniel Newman. He's in Market Square Arena over, or Market Square Drive uh, over there uh, in Central Louisiana to, uh, to help you with all your financial needs, all your financial questions. If you have uh, and work within the industrial space. They can help you out with any um, anything that you may have, any uh, questions that you may have about life after work or investments to make maybe with what's going on, 401K, Social Security, anything that's happening in and around your financial security, you can talk to Daniel Newman about it. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com. Uh, Colby Richardson, who has been one of the stories of this LSU fall football camp. It's going to be through the studio here. Speaking of Noah Tingle, uh, we've got <laughs> Noah on the uh, boots on the ground here. Going to um, offer up Colby a little ride here to the studio. Oh, Needed a ride to the studio, we so we're going to get him uh, to and from the uh, the FM Digital Studios over Just here. Just want to ride with me. Uh, <laughs> not, well, I, I, I thought about it, but I mean, like, I put the text out to our group. Everybody's in class this morning. Yeah. I mean, I figured we'd have one that could skip on the first day. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of first day goers here. That, the, yeah, maybe I didn't I do a good a job as I thought of grooming yeah, right. my, you know, yeah. grooming my children. I thought we'd all have a bunch of syllabus days. Yeah, everybody would be sure. here. Sure. I, I imagine if I know Stewie the way I think I know Especially Stewie, with an option on the plate to take a. Yeah, you got work. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, so we will talk to uh, Colby Richardson here coming up here uh, in a couple of minutes. What did what did Brian Kelly call him? I don't know. He that Cody. Um, not his name. Cody Dickerson. Cody Dickerson. Cody Dickerson. Hell of a player. Cody Dickerson. It's Colby Richardson, uh, and he's good. I was at the, I was at the scrimmage on Saturday. I saw no him. He flashed. He was. He he's, is. He's good. Um. All right, we'll be back here with more of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Get out of school. Cut class. What's happening? <laughs> 